If you've done much rendering, you're probably aware of what OSL is. And if you use Redshift, you may not be aware that there is a completely free library of OSL shaders that you can use in your projects. So I wanted to take a look at some of the more interesting ones today. So first of all, to get these OSL shaders, you have to go to this website. So I'll leave this in the description, or you can go to Google and just type in Redshift OSL, and it's this first GitHub link here. So there's a bunch of interesting stuff in here. Some of the more interesting ones, I think, are, if I go back in here, this shader that I have set up here, which is basically a super cool noise. So if I bring my render view over, you can see what it looks like. So this is the, let's actually drag that back out. If I go down, this is the turbulent color. Looks something like this. And there's a bunch of different shader information in here. So the way that we can create this is we just go to OSL, side of our material, and pop this in. Now you can either download the file or you can just copy and paste it into this little text source. So we'll just hit that and then compile and build. And it builds the same thing that I have here. I just messed with some of the values. So as I mess with these values here, you can see it's gonna go ahead and change, do some cool different things. You can also animate this, which gives us kind of a cool look. Pretty cool stuff here. There are a bunch of other ones in here that I wanted to look at. Uh, some of the more interesting ones is this marble one. So come back in here. It is, let's see, it's a marbled texture, marble shader. So it's this marble vein noise. Gives you this kind of an interesting look that we got right here. And I'll go back in here. So this is actually a, a different type of shader. So you wire this directly into the surface instead of into a material, but you got all these different values in here and just build it the same way that we do with all of the other ones. You can play with these different values, get some different looks to this. So if we wanted to lower the specular, make it shine a little bit more, maybe we want to change the veins, make it more frequent, get some cool different looks in here. Obviously you can change the different colors here and get some interesting stuff. I don't know, something weird bright yellow. Interesting little OSL shader in here. And one of the other ones that I wanted to look at, if I go ahead, let's switch over to this one, is another noise. So I'll go ahead and drag this back off. And this one is, if I can remember, it is this Drawbreaker Noise OSL. And they also have these different JPEGs here that will show you kind of what they do. So this is one of the looks you can get with that, or like, I don't know, let's take a look at this jitter. So this is like a point-based thing, so just kind of changes the the color of the whatever based off of your points or your different instances, I should say. Um, there's some um, different like black body stuff in here, which is pretty cool. So we've got a candle shader, also just a black body emission shader. You also have, if I come back in here to this first input, this is a tiled texture. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna wire this back in here and let me just change our view around a little bit. So normally, if I go back to our VopNet here, normally if I were to just have a regular texture plugged into here, you'd be able to see the repetitions quite a bit. But with this shader, so this is the tile, let's see what it's actually called. It's down here at the bottom. It is the texture no tile. So this one's really cool because it gets rid of tiling inside of your textures. So if I want to go in here, if you want to see kind of what's going on, I can come to this debug and you can see how it's kind of blending things. So if I bring this up, you can see as I start to bring this down, this is how it's blending over the original texture. So I found that kind of lower values work a little bit better, but you can also 
rotate. This doesn't actually show up in your viewport, but if I uh, click the debug there, as I rotate this, you see that it's rotating our texture underneath. So you can get some different looks there. This also, if I affect the level count here, this affects the complexity of our noise. So as I raise this up, it's gonna get really weird and just kinda doesn't look all that good. But as I start to bring this down, you can see that it starts to break up some of the repetition of our texture. And it doesn't look too bad. Now this doesn't work real well with uh, displacement. So I would be hesitant to use it if you're going to use anything with displacement. I also found that normal maps can be a little bit weird sometimes. Normal or, or bump maps can be a little bit weird. So just be careful kind of what you're doing with these settings but you can get some cool different things going on here with this texture no tile. But that's kind of the basics of what I wanted to take a look at. Like I said, there is a ton of different shaders in here. Oops, let's go ahead, drag that back off. So all these different shaders, like I said, ton of different stuff in here, ton of different useful things, and they all work with the regular Redshift nodes. So just take a look through here and see what you like use whatever you find useful and anything you don't then obviously you don't need to use it you also got this wood grain which looks pretty pretty solid really like the way that this looks so anyways hopefully this helped you out if you didn't know about this now you do you can use these different redshift osl shaders i think there's a bunch of other osl shaders just kind of out there so if you weren't aware of this node there are some super useful things in osl there is one that I've seen that's really, really impressive. It's basically like a flat plane, but you it displays it as a like a three-dimensional space, which is super, super cool. You can use it for like um, insides of buildings with like windows. So you just set up your window with that OSL shader and it can have the appearance of this three-dimensional inside space when it's actually just a plane. Super, super cool stuff really impressive stuff that people do with this OSL uh, shading language. So anyways, I got a bunch of other videos on my channel about Houdini. So if you want to learn more about Houdini or Redshift, I got a bunch of videos on that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and check out those other videos. And have a good day.